Hi everyone, this is Bradley. So today I'm going to do a tutorial for this animation. The design comes from a tutorial of Cinema 4D and I will do this in Blender using animation nodes. This tutorial will be very short because one of the major concepts, actually the biggest concept has been discussed in uh, E2 example 2 of my shader motion graphics tutorial and I will use the preset that I've created there. If you really need this tutorial to do this animation, then I think sooner or later you need to watch that tutorial. Uh, and uh, also you can download the animation node or know about that from the link in the description. So let's start. So the modeling is easy. I need to delete the default cube, add another cube, add a plane, increase its size, and add a cylinder for future boolean. Then I'm going to create a mesh circle. Uh, the vertices will be 16. This is personal so you don't necessarily follow. I'm going to duplicate this circle one for future use. And for the first circles, I'm going to shift these or vertices, shrink its size, go to the edge modes, bridge edge loops. And now I'm going to add a solidify modifier, make it kind of thick, uh, add a bevels, just uh, increase the segments, make it smooth and out. This is what we can do. And for the initial circle, uh, the second circles, I'm going to edge mode. Uh, the vertices modes, delete half of the vertices, hit F to connect uh, mid to vertices, and hit F to all vertices to fill that up. I'm going to add a solidify and solidify that to make some thickness and then some bevels to increase the segments. I've actually come a uh, uh, I was actually thinking many different methods, but the easiest way I think to do this animation is to use a mirror. So you can put the mirrors um, behind, or you can put the mirrors initially. That's not. Finally, you can see the uh, the mid cleft is something makes difference. And the easiest way to animate this door opening, it just goes to edit mode, and in this key one, and move that, and it went out edge mode. Uh, the edit mode. So now if you change the these values, you're changing the opening. And sometimes it does not really open up, but you don't need to worry. Just change the value to like, change this va max value so you open it up. This is it. I'm going to probably uh, parent these two things together and I'm going to name one as a frame, another as door. So now we finish this part, we just hide both of them. Uh, let's go to our cylinder and play. I'm going to boolean the everything. So let's make a boolean. Boolean the cylinders. And for cylinders, I probably will just uh, make it parent to the planes. But I will throw the cylinder to a hidden collection so that we no longer see that. And uh, let's go into our, went back to our Frame. So basically this is yet. Uh, you can shrink uh, the size of these planes and decrease it. So let's um, take the doors, increase the solidifies. I think roughly this is it. And we can definitely animate these doors. So previously we've made a cubes. Uh, for this cube, I'm going to add a material, just to name that a cube, and add a bevel modifier, just to increase the segments to smooth the edges out. And in the animation order, I need uh, three nodes at this moment. Distribute matrices, object instance, and uh, object matrix output. The entire point of using these nodes are to create an array. So you might think, okay, why don't I just use array modifier? And I will mention this reason later. But certainly you can use array modifier. But there are some reasons that I personally prefer to use animation or to do this work. And for these objects, you need a uh, copy for objects. Uh, also enable deep copy. I think it does not really matter. When it matters, you just uh, disable that. It will be fine. So now we're creating multiple instances. Uh, but they do not show up because we need to connect these matrices to matrices. So now we have a lot of big cubes. 
I'm going to create a bolt input so that you use one value to control these two values. I'll probably also change that to steps just to make it a one or two. Connect to that. Something like that. But you can also make an integer input so that it creates amount of divisions on a place. Now our cube is too big. Uh, you can definitely change the cube size on within, so like uh, shrink its size uh, in edit mode. Another way actually I'm going to do is just to take uh, offset matrices and take the scales uh, vector from values, connect to that maybe 0.5 things like that and uh, we can definitely shrink its size or even smaller shrink its size or you can actually expand these things it essentially does not matter there are many things that you can actually do with this I'm going to parent this as well so that if I'm scaling this entire things then everything scales up yeah this is kind of idea you can, you can do a lot of stuff yourself and I'm going to increase the Z dimension uh, probably put the Z as well so now if I increase the Z this is completely procedural the reason I use a ring modifier one reason is I would like to have all these objects individual object so that later on you can have uh, individual behaviors another reason is um, by using this X and Y function I can automatically get offset itself Finally, I use, after I use the I remodifier and going back uh, to the world origin or something, to, uh, to the center of the world or something like that. And then that's it. Um, to animate this, uh, I can use this, enable these uh, allocations and I'm making that up and down. You can actually also enable the rotation, I suppose. Actually, not because objects are individual. I will talk about the rotation later if we are involved with that. But now this is about it. Uh, you cannot really keyframe the animation node. This is a very important part. You cannot really keyframe that. It's just uh, not showing up uh, in places. You can see there is not nothing shows up even if I select the node. It's usually it just another works. There are many different ways to do this, but I personally prefer is to use object to transform input. And I'm going to take a value within controls. And use this controller to change that. And the one thing I have to remind you is usually I turn that always off. If you turn this always on, it will basically burn your computer. And uh, um, but uh, if you turn this always off, then you have to add a trigger. So you basically just change a object or collection and then name the object and type in location scale rotation ruler. So that when the uh, location change or scale change or the rotation change, uh, they will update these trees. So that's why I can use this control to manage its change. So this is it. Uh, I will name this as a, a positioner. Electric controller does not matter. And another thing is I would like to rotate when it goes up and down. So I'm going to uh, use a transform matrix. And I'm going to add the compose matrix. And add the rotation to rotation. So now if I'm rotating this controller, then it's rotating as well. As a floor or other things. So at this moment, this is done. So we are heading to the second part. So next step is to do the kind of uh, flying and the change the shape and so on. Oh, by the way, we need to change the shape. I almost forgot about this. So let's do our let's work with our cubes. Uh, I basically the idea is I need to add a subdivision surfaces. I almost forgot this. So let's take the wireframes. Look at how many vertices we actually need. So let's turn off these bevels. 
Oh, let's just increase a simple stuff, whatever, whatever. Let's put the subdivision surface at the beginnings. I'm going to uh, add the angles so that it only bevels the part which is needed. And then I'm going to add a cast. So basically the point is if I'm increasing the cast, then uh, it goes from uh, a kind of cubes to a more kind of ball-like. So it seems like 0 0.9 something. Actually, 1. Yeah, 1 goes to Sophia. And 0 0.5 is original. Actually, we make it zeros. So this is how we essentially can animate that. But of course, um, it's not possible to animate all these uh, all these cubes. That's why we need animation node to do the work for us. And that's why we instead of using a ring modifier, I need to really create different instances. And use the animation node, I can create an ar procedural array, but while also making them separate object and so on and so forth. So let's go to object. And now if we look at the cubes, you can see they only have bevels because I need to update everything before object again. So now they have been updated and the, uh, the modifier has been updated as well. So next thing I would like to do is make uh, all these cubes fly us away, uh, changing their colors, changing their shapes, and so on and so forth. I'm going to use a concept which is called a fall. So let's create a sphere. Let's name that as a fall. And I need to put that control so where the trigger is. And in the node, I need a uh, object controller for make the directional, choose our fall off and change the type to Z. Because by the end of the day, what I want is uh, move in the negative Z directions from up to down. And then I'm going to create a evaluate fall. I'm going to change the type to transform matrix. And because this is a matrices, I need to create a list by hitting this button. Fall of connect to fall, and it will output a strength. So this strength basically determine. So basically, the entire point is, I'm comparing the location of this fall of to the location of each individual uh, cubes. And when the direction fall of covers all the cubes which is above him, all these values will turn to be one. And when it's half like this, which is the goes like 0.5 or 0.8, whatever, whatever numbers. And I'm going to use these strengths to determine many things, like including the states of their transition of profile. Right? So, so let's do some kind of easy stuff. For example, uh, I have the modifier of this cast, and the, that turns everything to sphere. And I'm going to right click and copy data path. And I'm going to use a node which is called object attributes output. Connect this object to object and uh, paste what the data path we just copied and enable the multiple values and turn these values on. Then you can see instantaneously it's already working. It actually turns everything into spheres. So this is how uh, the, the basic principles about how it works. I basically explained the whole things uh, in my shader motion graphics tutorial. So if you would like to understand the principles, then I highly recommend you to watch the example two in that tutorial. Uh, it will basically do the work. And especially, I, I suppose you need to watch that tutorial because I'm going to use a preset, which is called the object shader list. This is basically a preset I built in that tutorial as well. So you, I think you really just have to watch that. If you, so now let's look at that. So now basically is it. So within, uh, within the range of four, then it's yellow. With, uh, outside the range of four, it's kind of blue, whatever stuff. Uh, I will think I will color the other object as well. So I basically made a very, very quick shading. It's, it's kind of ugly, but it, I think it does not matter. You can do that in your free times, but that's not a point of discussion today. And uh, uh, basically, it's, it's uh, let me think. So the final step that we're going to do is make all these, all these objects fly. There are many different ways. You either use animation node, or actually there is another way to 
uh, use the physics. So in able the physics, finally we have still have to use the rigid body and the more importantly in the copy for object. So now we see everything has been disappeared. Uh, if we go to the beginning, so you can see uh, if we play this animation, that all these cubes will just collapse. But I want to all these uh, cubes stays where they should be uh, until I trigger them with the fall. So to do that, I need to uh, basically uh, animate this animated option. Uh, this option is very important. So basically, if you click hold that on, uh, it will define its location according to its transform. So now I selected this one and uh, put the, this uh, animate option. And if I'm playing this animation, then it stays at the place while the others falls off. So to controlling these animate options, I'm going to use these strands as well. I'm going to hit W and go to the right and the loop through this entire thing. And then I'm going to compare. And when the strength is over 0 0.5 or whatever number between 0 and 1, then it will output a boolean list. So boolean list basically means yes or no. So we're going to use a yes or no to define whether it's yes collected or no not collected. Actually, we're going to make it smaller than 0 0.5. So let's do that. Um, the object attributes output as we did earlier, yes, and I copy the data path. Copy object goes to object, boolean list goes to boolean list, and definitely activate multiple values. So now, if we see that, it reminds me that I actually need the gravity is 210. So let's play the animation again. So let's take that to 50. So you can see all these objects flies away. So this is basically finished. Uh, eventually you just need to animate. Um, eventually you just need to animate this fall. Then it can determine all these kind of things. And definitely the fall also controls the color as well. It can also control the metallics or no metallics as I've been stated uh, in my shader motion graphics tutorial. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.